Good morning, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. I am sitting in the front yard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. It is shaping up to be a gorgeous sunny day. My neighbor's rooster has been real busy all morning. So um, I have a really, really hectic day today and I'm just absolutely scrambling. I just got out of the shower, my hair's all wet. I've been go, 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 go all morning. We have house guests coming and it turns out they're arriving 24 hours before their original expected arrival time. So if any of y'all have a lot of kids, you know, a house with uh, four kids and then um, uh, my dad's house, I have to get both of those houses ready for company um, by this evening when I was expecting to have until tomorrow night. So that's just real life. It is what it is, but yeah, I'm scrambling. Okay. so. I have this very small chunk of time here and I promised y'all I would make a video on this subject. So while I've got like 10 or 15 minutes here, I want to knock this out because I owe y'all an explanation. Let's let this car, car go by. So in a number of my recent videos, you can see kind of in the background a, a series of screens and I've talked about how that's for an upcoming project and today I want to show you what I use them for. So here in the Pacific Northwest, and I know a lot of places in North America, cabbage lopers are an unbelievable pest for all of our brassicas, for cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, you name it. Um, they lay their eggs on the plants and the caterpillars just absolutely devastate. They can strip a kale plant in a couple of days. And the caterpillars are the same green color as the stems on a brassica plant, so they're actually pretty difficult to find. Because there's such a problem here, and I've had so much frustration over the years with um, having to deal with floating row covers and protecting my cauliflower and broccoli over the summer, I actually stopped growing those crops over the summer. Which is a good thing because here in Portland, our summers are getting hotter and those plants actually tend to bolt in hot weather. So because of the cabbage lopers being active in spring and summer and early fall, because of hotter summers, I don't grow a lot of brassicas at all during the spring and summer. I do grow kale because uh, I love kale and I find that uh, it tends to not be completely decimated by the cabbage lopers, it tends to still put out a good crop. And um, I grow my tree collards and those have had uh, minimal cabbage loper damage. But most of my brassicas I am going to grow over the winter. So I start them now, usually the last week of June, first week of July, I start them and then I plant them out in the fall after my cabbage loper problem has gone dormant for the winter. So once those butterflies stop flying, they're not reproducing for the year, it's safe to put your brassicas in the ground. And then our winters here are so mild, I will get a harvest in the late winter and then in the early spring, February, March, April, before the cabbage lopers are active again for the next year, I will have quite the yield of uh, cauliflower and broccoli, broccoli rob, things like that. So what do I do in the interim if I'm starting my seeds now in June and July and they're gonna germinate and they're gonna be these tasty little greens? What do I do to keep the cabbage lopers from plowing them to the ground in the summer? So for most people, when they see an um, insect pest in the garden, the initial thought is to spray it with an insecticide. Now, if you watch my channel at all, you'll know that I'm not gonna do that. I am a pesticide-free zone. I don't use uh, products that are going to uh, kill beneficial insects. And also, if you want to have natural pest control and you want to have predators like songbirds and um, spiders and things like that, snakes come in and clean up your insect pests, you cannot eliminate all of your insect pests um, using poison. You'll have collateral damage of killing beneficials. And also I want to create a garden where there is food for wildlife. So a small amount of pest pressure doesn't bother me as long as it is in balance in my system. So I'm not gonna use uh, nasty poisons in my garden that are gonna harm my body and harm the planet. The solution I have found is that I'm going to use a mechanical barrier. Now for some people that's floating row covers, I have found them very fidgety and are, they're also made of plastic and I don't like um, the fact that they shed little fibers of microplastic as they break down. 
So my solution was to go buy some old window screens and create basically a safety cage, create a uh, box where I'm thinking about, um, you know, my, my brassicas are a scuba diver going in with great white sharks. And so I want that safety cage for them where they are protected from the great white sharks of cabbage loper butterflies, but they can safely exist in my ecosystem. So I took four used window screens from the rebuilding center, salvaged screens that came out of homes here in Portland. And if you are using old window screens for a project like this, be aware they may contain lead paint. So the solution for me was two thick coats of exterior house paint that I had left over from our recent painting project here. And that way it seals them in and makes them safe to use. You could also source aluminum window screens. For me, that wasn't an option. I couldn't find four that were the same size. Plus I wanted to paint it the same color as my house. So let me flip the camera around and show you what this box looks like, how I'm starting my brassicas in it and how it is protecting them from cabbage lopers. All right, so here's the front of my house. This is an area where we took out all of these um, shrubs that were here, giant rosemary, earlier in the year because it damaged the front of my house and I had to have all of this repaired and replaced. It was whew, a big expensive project. So right now I, I don't know what I'm gonna use this space for. We'll see, I may end up putting a deck out here. Because I follow permaculture um, principles and one of those is slow, small solutions, I don't want to rush to make any changes here. I don't wanna, um, make big sweeping changes without really taking the time to observe and interact and think through the ramifications of my choices. So for now, this is just a gravel patch with cardboard down to suppress weeds. So this seemed like the perfect place for my brassica box. So here you can see the window screens. One, two, three, four. This way I am allowing all kinds of sunshine in. The back of the box, I didn't really feel the need to invest in one more window screen. I had my partner took apart an old pallet for me that we got by the side of the road and we used little scrap pieces of trim. And that worked really well because this is facing straight north, the sun comes in this way. Don't need to have this open in the back, just saved a few pennies. You can see the struts from the sides of the pallets made up the sides of the frame. So here I have, again, well-painted two coats of paint to protect the um, existing paint underneath because I am not sure if it is lead paint or not. And I got these four screens the same size. Now you may say this is really large, but my brassicas are going to be pretty big by the time I plant them out and I'm going to have a lot of them. So you maybe might want to get smaller screens. You can get a lot of screens about half the size um, or about two thirds the size of the rebuilding center. So the box opens in the front here. And again, we used hinges from the rebuilding center. So those are repurposed hinges. And then it just opens up. And then I can gain access to the box. I have a stick here to prop it open. Let me do that. So quick. inside the brassica box, you can see the back that is made with pallets. You can see the pallet struts, free wood. There's always free pallets to be had on Craigslist all over Portland. And then I have my tray with my seeds in it. They have not yet germinated, but that way I have easy access under here. There's my watering pitcher. I keep them in a tray because you always want to water your seeds from the bottom. You can see I watered them this morning. Watering from the top encourages dampening off and, um, uh, algae to grow and it also encourages other fungal diseases. So you always want to water from the bottom. So they're in a tray here. So you can see they're completely contained. The screens form a mechanical barrier through which the cabbage lopers cannot enter. So I have good access for water and sun to penetrate. I have easy access for opening and getting in and taking care of my seedlings in here, but there's no way cabbage lopers can get in here. I have loads of room so that when I need to take my little cell pots and four inch pots and pot them up into half gallon and one gallon pots before fall, I have lots of room to fill that here. So my hope is that, let me close this up here. My hope is that this year I will not have the challenge of dealing with brassicas 
uh, being destroyed by those cabbage lopers. And I can get these good, strong start in life and then plant them out in the fall and enjoy over the winter rutabagas and um, Brussels sprouts and in the very early spring cauliflower, broccoli rob, purple sprouting broccoli, kale. Just a feast of nutritious brassicas, one of my favorite uh, groups of vegetables. So thank you for watching. I hope that gives you some encouragement that you don't have to poison the heck out of your system. You don't have to have an adversarial relationship with the environment, with wildlife. We can have good balance in our permaculture systems. We can use permaculture design principles to find simple solutions to our problems. In this case, repurposing, reusing a salvaged material, spending almost no financial output and creating a safe place to grow our brassicas so that we can produce food that is safely sheltered from garden pests, but we don't have to do chemical warfare in our gardens. There are other options. There are smart solutions when we use permaculture design. Thank you for watching. If you got something out of this video, please check out my Patreon down in the description and click subscribe to learn more about resilient living and gardening. Thank you.